The Asus Chromebook Plus CX54 has taken a very strange path to get here. While we had hands on it in December of last year prior to CES in 2024, it didn't arrive at that show and didn't really show up at all for real until May at Google's Chromebook Showcase in New York. But it was worth the wait in a lot of ways, and I'm pretty excited to show you exactly why that is. So let's get into it. When we first saw this device, I was super pumped that Asus was back to making a higher end Chromebook. It's sleek, thin, light, all metal, and just a Chromebook that feels great to hold and to look at. Sure, it's kind of angular, but it pulls it off far better than the CX-9 from a few years back, and I really do like the overall aesthetic of the CX-54 in a lot of ways. And even though the body of this Chromebook is really thin at only 1.69 centimeters, it's really rigid too, and there are still a ton of ports all along the outside. I love that so much, and it just makes life easier all around when you can hook up stuff and not really have to think too much about finding a port or a dongle. Speaking of those ports, you get uh, two USB type C's, two type A's, full size HDMI 2.1 port, micro SD card slot, headphone microphone jack, and a Kensington lock. And the USB type C ports are also Thunderbolt 4, so you can get better multi-monitor support and faster data transfers and stuff like that too. But cracking this one open is where the magic really happens. Right up front, there's a fantastic eight megapixel camera with a privacy shutter and under that is one of the best screens we've ever had on a Chromebook. It's 14 inches, quad HD, 16 by 10, and 500 nits. The bezels are tiny, the screen feels large, and the animations because of the 120 hertz refresh rate are just buttery smooth. I just, I don't have anything negative to say about it. I love nearly everything about this screen. But it's not a touch screen. And I found that generally doesn't bother me too much, but I know that's a bummer for some of you. Now, the review unit that we have does come with a touchscreen, but the standard model that you're going to find at like Best Buy, it doesn't. And that one's the one that's $699. And it's the one I'd recommend most of you go buy if you're interested in this Chromebook. Now you can search for and find upgraded versions out there in the wild, but inventory, the delivery, the customer service have been an issue for those in our Chrome Unbox Plus community who have tried to get one of those outside of a Best Buy. So I just have a little bit of a hard time recommending that you go and buy one from like a B2B place like CDW. And speaking of our Chrome Unbox Plus community, I wanted to take just a second, if you're unaware of it, uh, to let you know about it. Um, it's a place where you can rub shoulders and talk with other like-minded people who enjoy Chromebooks and Google products. Um, it gives you access to um, our site with a ad-free experience, and it's only two bucks a month. It's one of those places that I love hanging out. I love being around the people that are in there. I learn stuff from them um, and we are having new people join every day. It's a fantastic community. It's something that I uh, think that you'd probably be really interested in if you enjoy Chromebooks and Google products. So if you'd like to learn more about that, uh, just head over to chromeunbox.com forward slash join and you can get all the info there to uh, become a part of Chrome Unbox Plus. So the screen's awesome, but under that screen, you also get a superb keyboard and a huge glass trackpad and a fingerprint scanner. And all of it works beautifully, and I have basically no gripes with any of it except for well, one thing. I hate Asus's gray keycaps with backlighting. Most of the time when the CX-54 boots up, the keyboard backlights around like 30 or 40%. And that's just bright enough to make the key symbols the same kind of gray color as the keycaps. And I have to either crank it up to max or turn it all the way off to actually see any of the symbols on the keyboard. Why Asus struggles to get this right year after year is a, a mystery to me, but it's a thing again here with the CX-54. Now on the inside with the Intel Core 5 125U, 8 gigs of RAM and 128 gigs of storage, you're getting all the performance you'd want out of a Chromebook Plus device. Again, there are upgraded models out there with more RAM and storage, but getting them delivered can really be a chore. For 95% of you out there, the configuration you'll find at Best Buy is plenty fast with performance headroom to spare, and you can enjoy that performance for like seven, eight hours on a charge and push maybe even closer to that nine or 10 hours if you can manage to keep that big, beautiful display crank down just a little bit. My only real gripes with this Chromebook are the speakers and one comfort issue I run into quite a bit. So the speakers are fine and sound decent, but they're downward firing and they don't quite live up to what Asus has been doing in the speaker department on their Chromebooks for, you know, like the past two or three years. I still marvel a lot at the quality of sound my wife's Asus CX-5 puts out. It's a few years old. And when she plays a video for me, 
they, they sound awesome. The speakers on the CX-54 are fine. They're just not remarkable. And that angular chassis I talked about at the beginning of the video bears its teeth a bit when it's sitting in your lap. Specifically, the nubs on the back of the top panel as you open it that rest on your knees when you set it in your lap just kind of grind into your legs. And the discomfort really does set in just about immediately. Trust me, if you have your lower thighs exposed at all, beware of longer lap sessions. And if those nubs don't get you, the sharp edges of the top panel will. Now, I will admit that a pair of jeans basically undoes this entire issue, but I've not loved it during the summer and short season. And that is the Asus Chromebook Plus CX-54. It's not perfect, no Chromebook is, but it does get a lot of the equation right. If top-notch build quality, a rigid chassis, a fantastic screen, incredible typing experience, expansive trackpad, massive port selection, fast internals sound like your thing, I think it's most of our things, I think $699 is frankly an incredible price for this Chromebook. I have a few hangups, yeah, but those are minimal when you consider how good this device is overall. And I think anyone paying this price for an experience this good that gets updates until June of 2034 is going to be very, very happy with their purchase. But guys, that's it for this one. If you enjoyed this video, give us a thumbs up, head down there, hit that subscribe button, and be sure to ring the notification icon as well if you'd like to be alerted when we make future videos just like this one. Until next time, we'll see you.